On Sunday 14th of February 2010, the Federal Bureau of Aircraft Accidents Investigation was informed by telephone that near Reinhardsdorf's Chana in Saxon, Switzerland, a plane had disappeared from the radar screen. A little later the crash of a Cessna 550 Citation Bravo B in the specified area was confirmed. During the night, an investigation team of the FU traveled to the scene to investigate the crash scene. So what happened? The accident aircraft arrived into Praharuzin International Airport in Czech Republic at a quarter to eight in the evening after completing a return hop from France and back. The co-pilot of this flight got off the plane after landing and was replaced by the current co-pilot to be involved in the accident flight. The aircraft was due to be repositioned to Tokalstad in Sweden. There were no passengers on board. The aircraft departed at 10 past 8 in the evening. The flight was to be conducted under instrument flight rules. The course of the accident flight will be described based on the analyzed data of the records of flight data recorder, cockpit voice recorder, radar and aircraft radio. First, let's take a closer look at the aircraft involved. The Citation Bravo first flew on April 25, 1995. Production of the Citation Bravo ceased in late 2006 after 336 had been delivered. The Citation Bravo typically cruises at 400 knots at 35,000 feet with 8 passengers and 2 crew. It also boosts an impressive 3,000 feet per minute climb rate. The captain was a 27-year-old female with approximately 1,700 hours total time. The co-pilot was a 32-year-old male with a total time of around 1,600 hours. Both pilots had their licenses issued by the Czech Civil Aviation Authority. The unfortunate flight departed from runway 31, the co-pilot was pilot flying. The flight was carried out. Manually, neither autopilot was turned on. Shortly after takeoff, the Cessna Bravo tracked north. During the climb, the pilot in command expressed that she had not flown at night for a long time. The co-pilot then asked, really. He then added have you ever flown a barrel roll in the night? She replied, laughing, we would rather not. Why, of you? The co-pilot responds, you are the first person with whom I have talked about it, do not say. Responsible, airplane leader. Who I cannot tell? The brief conversation was then interrupted by air traffic control to ask them to climb to flight level 260 and to track direct to a waypoint. The conversation in the cockpit then continues with the co-pilot stating that the Bravo model makes rolling faster with the ailerons. The captain replies, later though. The co-pilot responds with, let's do it later. At 17 minutes past 8 in the evening, the aircraft is recorded banking first to the left 30 degrees followed by a bank to the right of 30 degrees before leveling the wings. Shortly after this, air traffic control clears the aircraft to climb on up to flight level 330. 10 seconds after this transmission, the focus in the cockpit once again turns back to completing a barrel roll. Aerobatical moves are not approved for the Cessna business jet. Both pilots do not have aerobatic ratings either. The captain then asked, is it enough? The co-pilot asked, enough for what? The captain responded, for the rule. The co-pilot added, yes, it's enough. This is in reference to the height of the aircraft to attempt such a maneuver. At 19 minutes past 8, the aircraft was at flight level 2, 7, 0. The aircraft was pitched up to an angle of about 14 degrees and began to roll to the right due to actions of the co-pilot around the longitudinal axis. Within about 4 seconds, the aircraft was inverted and the pitch dropped almost to the vertical dive down at 85 degrees. The speed increased past the design limits of the aircraft. The computed airspeed increased from about 240 knots at the initiation of the roll to 380 knots during the descent, a situation developed that was impossible for the pilots to recover the aircraft. 
the plane crashed near the village of Reinhardsdorf's Chona in a wooded area of Saxon Switzerland approximately 500 meters north of the border with the Czech Republic. The snow at the crash site was covered with fuel. Due to the destruction only larger and more massive components such as the two engines, the two main landing gear and the tail section could be identified in the investigation, on the spot. To further examine the wreckage were recovered and transported to the RAB to Brunswick. The investigation of the wreck, and reviews of technical documents revealed no evidence of accident-related aircraft defects. The high degree of destruction started off with the high impact energy. Because of this large energy impact, survival of the crew was not possible. The crash caused a severe destruction to the bodies of both pilots. Due to the strong kerosene contamination of body parts, a chemical toxicological investigation was waived because no representative results could be expected. The recording of the CVR described the interactions of the two pilots. During the climb to cruising altitude, a situation of poor airmanship developed. This is clearly evident by the records of the FDR and CVR. The content of the conversation of the pilots shows that they began to talk about flying a barrel roll. At no time did the pilot in command take lead and prevented such a situation. It gives the impression that there was an intimate relationship between the two and there was no clear cockpit hierarchy in play. The yurts of the maneuvers lead to a control loss due to a loss of situational awareness. Report conclusive findings. The pilots have no aerobatics training. The pilots agreed on an aerobatic maneuver to fly. The pilot in command did not try to stop the maneuver. The co-pilot initiated the roll. Both pilots lost spatial orientation. Nighttime conditions applied, thereby, missing optical references. The personal relationship between the two pilots led to the withdrawal from the professional conduct of cooperation in the cockpit. The aircraft was not designed or approved for aerobatics.